Hi, this is Roma, and we're going to talk about the ground today. So you might design a really strong structure above the ground, but you really need to think about what's happening below ground as well, because that's where you're finding the structure itself. So if the ground below is quite wet or it's soft or awful in some way, then the structure above might just sink or tilt, and that's not really what we want to happen. So if you're thinking about building a tunnel, for example, under the Thames, which is what the Brunels did in the 19th century, you really need to understand what materials you're working with. Now, because London sits on the banks of the River Thames, the ground that we have is actually quite variable because the river's been depositing different types of things over the various centuries. So one of the materials we find is sand. So sand, if you can imagine, is a very incohesive material, so it can flow all over the place. Now, my sand is magic sand, so it's probably not going to behave the same way as sand you'd find on a beach. But what you want to try and imagine is that you take your cookie cutter, which is representing your tunnel machine, and you're going to cut into it. And what you find is as you take the material out of this, the sand starts to kind of fall into the hole. And that's not really what you want when you're trying to build a tunnel. Another material that we have is clay. Now clay, if it's got the right amount of moisture in it, is a great material to tunnel through. So I've got some Play-Doh here, which has really been fun to play with because I haven't probably played with this since I was a little girl. But if you now use your cookie cutter to go through this, and you take the material out, look how beautifully that's held its shape. So it's really, really important to understand what kind of ground you have underneath buildings and also for when you're trying to build a tunnel.